Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today we'll give some information study design and hypotheses. More after the break. Although the design of a study is predefined, every clinical research associate should of course be able to understand the reasons for the selection of one specific study design. All clinical studies include a primary objective, which describes the effect to be measured for each corresponding study. Before starting the study, the primary objective has to be defined precisely and has to be clinically relevant for the subjects. Examples of a primary objective are the diastolic blood pressure of hypertensive study subjects at the beginning and at the end of a study, or a five-year survival rate, which is supposed to be improved by a new therapy. The study hypothesis describes the magnitude of the effect, which is supposed to be proven in the study. This hypothesis has to be precisely defined before studies start as well. The required level of accuracy also has an effect on the sample size needed in the study. Examples for a study hypothesis are a blood pressure difference of 10 units or an increase in the five-year survival rate of 5%. It is roughly differentiated between a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the pessimistic idea of the study outcome. In our example, a new blood pressure lowering drug would thus be incapable of lowering the blood pressure by 10 units. Whereas the alternative hypothesis could be that the new blood pressure lowering drug is able to lower the diastolic blood pressure by at least 10 units. For reasons of efficiency, a study design is chosen that allows further effects besides the primary objective to be tested. These effects are secondary objectives, complementing the study with interesting details. Exploratory data analysis is performed, with the aim of identifying trends or of generating more hypotheses for further studies. In this context, it would be interesting, for example, to examine headache as a side effect of a therapy or a possible influence on quality of life. When selecting a suitable study type, it should be considered how many therapy alternatives are to be compared. These are referred to as study arms. Furthermore, it should be taken into consideration whether a single therapy is conducted per subject or whether a so-called crossover design is applied. The extent of the study can either be fixed or it is determined sequentially. Moreover, in this phase, it is important to consider randomization, i the random assignment of subjects to different therapy arms, and the blinding concept as well. To understand the study design and the hypotheses is most important in every clinical trial. In our next video, we will go more into specific details. So much for today on study design and hypotheses. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time.